This video is a recording of a webinar presented by Dave Wagner on November 30th, 2022 on Insect Decline and the Status of Insects Research Coordination Network. Okay, so um, there's basically five uh, PIs, co-PIs. And so that's myself, Christy Bali, uh, Chris Elphick, Eliza, who's, who's really the brainchild of uh, a lot that's happening right now and uh, much of what's going to happen. And she's uh, on postdoctoral support actually to help us run run the RCN. So integral to everything that's happening and maybe where you'd wanna address questions. And Jessica Ware uh, from the American Museum of Natural History, uh, president of the Entomological Society of America and, and many other things. So the, these are the, the core PIs. And then we have a steering committee that sits outside that um, with May Barenbaum, uh, Scott Black from the, the executive director of the Xerxes Society and, and Lynn Dix from Cambridge and Matt Forster and Sunichi Nakakawa and Morgan Pingley. So this is really a dream team. And I'm so excited about this group and, and potentially what we could do. And then um, all of you and our working group groups maybe form outer shells uh, to these. And, and so that's more or less what we envision with the working groups really being an essential part of what we accomplish over the next five years. And Eliza will have more to say about that. One thing I wanted to say is that insects are not declining everywhere. So um, it's clear that, it's, at least in my mind, insects must be declining, right? We have 8 billion people on the planet now and uh, massive deforestation on a yearly basis. Uh, much of this converted into agriculture. Agriculture has gotten in incredibly nature unfriendly. And uh, we, you know, a third of the a third of, of the planet is in agriculture at this point in time. If you count grazing and, and livestock, so um, we're in the middle of a biodiversity crisis. Um, but we also know that insects aren't declining everywhere. And I just put up a few examples here. And you're hearing maybe that uh, insects are declining very, very rapidly in northwestern Costa Rica, where Dan Jansen's been working. But if we go um, further south, one country, and we get reports, quantitative reports, good reports from Barrow, Colorado, Barrow, Colorado Island in the Panama Canal, lots of intact forest around there. Um, no, no apparent declines, or at least for many lineages, things seem stable. Uh, in, in Europe, we're seeing, at least Britain has some of the best data that we have for insects around the planet. We're seeing many species increase, at least in occupancy, and um, uh, almost equal numbers to the number you know, that are decreasing. And so this probably has everything to do with climatary, uh, or planetary climate warming and, and planetary temperatures rising such that some of these southern species are moving northward. Freshwater insects are increasing, actually, at least in places where we've cleaned up the water, passed a clean water legislation, and also in places where the water is warming, uh, particularly, say, in uh, Canadian areas or uh, higher latitudes where cold temperatures were limiting insect distributions. So. Um, Another thing that I should could put on the slide or just alert us to is that where we're trying restoration efforts, uh, we're, we're generally having pretty good luck, you know. And so that's the optimistic uh, part of my 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 ten or fifteen minutes, uh, uh, you know, chance the opportunity to talk is that where we're trying to restore pollinators, uh, where, where we have a particular butterfly that we're interested in, or where we've cleaned up water, insects are responding positively. And I, I think that that gives us all hope. And I, I think that should put mojo in our tanks. And um, uh, to, to sort of underscore that even more, one of the great things about being an entomologist or being a conservation biologist who worries about invertebrates is the insects have this ridiculously uh, high potential for reproductive output and recovery. And so this is the monarch, this is a plot of monarch population numbers along the west coast of North America in their overwintering clusters. And uh, so what I'll point out here is in the year 2020, we were down to about 2000 monarchs in all of the overwintering clusters along the California coast. One year later, we have over 200,000 monarchs in these, these, these clusters. And so that's the reproductive potential um, if, that insects have. And if we do the right thing, uh, how quickly uh, things or matters might turn around. 
And so there's, there is hope. And if we do the right thing, in essence, I think that's why most of us are on this call, is, is that uh, there, there's great possibilities uh, for us looking forward. Uh, one thing I also want to point out uh, with my time is that many of the declines we heard about early on were from Europe, uh, particularly Western and, and Northern Europe, and in many places in the United States. We don't have any data uh, to speak of um, for many parts of the world. Uh, we're especially data deficient in the Southern Hemisphere and the, through many areas of the tropics. But one thing that's important is we are seeing declines in wildlands now. So um, in areas of low population density. So these, many of these declines you heard about in Europe, they have 200, 300, 400 people living per square kilometer. And I, of course, we're gonna see insect declines. Uh, we're gonna see biodiversity declines of all, of all kinds. Um, but you know, when you go to Canada and there's um, you know, just four people per square kilometer, that's a whole different story. And so we are, for example, um, seeing some declines. This is Crossley's, but oh, I don't know why this is skipping, but this is Crossley's data from uh, North America. And this is 4th of July butterfly count data. data. And we have areas where butterflies are increasing. Uh, this would be the rainforest of the Pacific Northwest. And so as the planet warms, um, butterfly diversity is increasing here. Um, it's increasing in the southeast. This is another area of increasing rainfall. Um, but we have very steep declines in the American southwest. And, and so this is a very lightly populated area of the country. And these declines are not associated with urbanization or agriculture, which is particularly disturbing. It, they are associated with climate changes. You can see at the bottom of this slide with higher temperatures uh, causing butterfly numbers to drop and, and uh, lower precipitation uh, linked to uh, lower numbers of butterflies. Uh, this is a study by Matt Forrester um, across three different data sets, Art Shapiro's butterfly transects, uh, then the, these NAVA counts or 4th of July counts, and even iNaturalist data all told the same story. And actually, um, uh, even areas uh, without uh, high human habitation uh, were declining. So again, uh, uh, presumably driven by climate change. So these rates of decline really matter, and I, I, I harp on this, but I want to pound on it again because I think it, it'll motivate us, and, and that is that we're seeing across many terrestrial areas, we're seeing about a 1% decline per year. Um, it doesn't seem like much, and maybe that doesn't motivate you, but I have one slide that I hope will motivate all of us and that, that's coming. Um, but we're seeing even, so the new news here, and the reason I'm sharing is, is that there are areas with even higher rates of decline, right? So um, uh, Weprick, a study on butterflies in Iowa was a 2% loss of, of, of abundance per year. And, and uh, Ellen Welty's grasshoppers on uh, the Kansas Prairie uh, declining almost up to 3% per year. This, this is just terrible and uh, really alarming. And I'll show you why in the next slide. And the studies from, from Germany, uh, not only Hallman's, but Siebold's study, uh, reporting rates even higher than 5% in, in certain cases, uh, which is just unacceptable. I put this slide together so you can see how important 1% is. So 1% is hard to see. You, you, you wouldn't really see much of it over the course of a human lifetime. You'd have to maybe be watching insects for, for 30 years before you really started saying, hey, things are really different. But it's so important. So if we started off with 10,000 individuals, even at just 1% uh, rate of decline after just four decades, you're going to be down, um, you know, you've already lost a quarter of the tree of life. And with these 2% uh, rates uh, we're seeing, even after four decades, you'd be down, you know, close to um, half the biodiversity of the planet would be eliminated, which is absolutely uh, catastrophic. And so we should be highly motivated by a 1% uh, rate of decline, uh, the kind of thing that uh, Raoul Van Klink has found in his meta-analysis of global insect population trends. And so, um, again, I, it, it doesn't sound like much and it's hard to motivate other people, but if you plot it out over just um, three or four decades, you can see that it's enormously important. 
Uh, one thing where we're seeing a lot more interest, and so this is a, a research frontier, if you will, is that um, we, 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 need, we need to start looking more at uh, how rates vary across clades and guilds. Um, there's seven or eight million insects on the planet. We can't study them all. Um, there's, we don't have data from the Southern Hemisphere uh, from, from many localities and, and way too little data from the tropics. And so uh, looking at uh, uh, rates and how they vary across uh, guilds and um, habitats uh, is, is going to be very, very important. We almost have no data for apex predators. Um, they, you know, based on first principles, they should be declining faster uh, than uh, their low, lower trophic levels. And then there would be hyperparasitoids on top of those, right? So, um, and, and looking for these uh, broader scale patterns should be, uh, should be pretty interesting. It should be relevant to a lot of us that have a, a particular interest. I have a particular interest in caterpillars, um, Lepidoptera. And, and this is really gonna be one of the anchor uh, foci of the Glitters group um, out of the UK uh, Center for Ecology and Hydrology. Uh, I'll talk a, a little bit more about them in a second, but, um, and, um, I'm, I'm a systematist. I might as well um, be unabashed about this. I, a taxonomy matters to me. And there's this real tension in all the work that we're going to do and, and want to do and uh, would hope to do in that, uh, you know, there's insects are so numerous that it's it's really hard to get species level data. We'd love species level data, but it's too expensive. And um, it's very, very uh, time consuming to collect this kind of data. And so, you know, we have to make this decision on where we're going to stop in terms of, uh, you know, taxonomy. We can stop at insect biomass and they're all insects, or we could get down to the family level or we could get down to the species level. I know biomass is important for, for ecosystem services, you know, uh, for pollination, for decomposition and all of that. Uh, but I, I have to say that I'm an unapologetic entomophile. I think the species matter. Um, each species matters. Each uh, has a story to tell, and they can each tell us about the stressors that are acting in their in their habitat or their environment. And so um, I, I, you know, a part of that, I just want to share some images. I just took 10 days uh, with Elizabeth Colbert to look at insects in West Texas, uh, which is suffering from um, a mega drought. And, and so we wanted to look at what was happening to insect diversity. But I love these creatures. And this is why, to me, species matters. And I, I want to know, I want to know about all of them. I know bulk samples are really important. Um, but where we can, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that we can um, get down deeper and, and get an appreciation for what's really being lost uh, when we're talking about insect diversity and climate change and other stressors acting on the little things that run the world. So um, again, uh, just a couple more uh, points about why taxonomy matters. Uh, you know, bulk insect biomass is really great for ecosystem services, but if you want to talk about ecosystem function and the integrity of food webs, interaction diversity, the welfare of specialists, we have to have um, a finer scale uh, data and, and fi find out a way to do that. And I think meta, meta barcoding uh, has, has many possibilities and, and some of the AI that's being developed now is a really exciting frontiers and we need them badly. And I'm sure that this will be an, an upcoming, upcoming webinar. And so I don't know when that's scheduled. I, roughly, Eliza's imagining that we'd have one of these webinars about once a month and, and get together uh, for those of you that are interested. And we don't expect anyone to attend all, uh, but there might be some uh, hopefully large fraction that you uh, might be interested in tuning into. So other projects that are going on, the Glitters uh, project I already mentioned, um, uh, looking at uh, global uh, um, responses, and they're really into uh, being able to make predictions about where and when and who are, are going to be in decline. So um, then they have a sister uh, project in, in the UK, Druid, which is um, being led out of the University of Leeds, that's really focused on the uh, UK or, or the British fauna. And um, uh, all both of these groups are linked to um, many other groups, just as are RCN is. The Entomological Society of America has just formed a, a new uh, insect diversity decline committee uh, that's uh, chaired by Jessica Ware. Um, and the, the uh, National Academy of Sciences in the U.S. has just approved a prospectus for a consensus study, basically a white paper 
on uh, North American insect declines. So uh, just briefly about our RCN. So um, these are our goals. And, and again, it's to build an internet international network uh, of all of you and, and maybe to grow that network. So we uh, have representation. Um, we especially are interested in growing um, activity and, and interest in buy-in participation from the Southern Hemisphere. That's going to be very important. And, and the tropics, where maybe 80% of all insect uh, diversity is, uh, we, we absolutely need to do more there. Um, but our goals are to develop a community-driven approach to systematic data synthesis, map and meta-analyze current knowledge of insect populations and diversity, and, and again, it's globally. And then we're most excited, or I'm very excited about these, uh, so the focus on solutions, uh, ways to protect insect biodiversity. So um, uh, we, we're uh, partnered with the Xerxes Society, and, and in fact, uh, a fair amount of our budget is uh, being shared with the Xerxes Society to help us with the solutions piece, uh, trying to f slow these rates of decline and come up with uh, policies, coming up with education and outreach and other efforts that uh, can help us stem insect decline. 